Okay, hi everyone. Here is a little kind of thing which I think is really awesome about Canon. Canon has got four different types of 70 to 200 millimeter lenses. Nikon at the moment really only has one. Now, the, the four options are uh, you've got two which are 70 to 200 f2.8s. One of them has an ultra, no, no, they both have ultrasonic motors, but one of them has got vibration reduction or image stabilization, as they call it in Canon terms. And then it's got two 70 to 200s, which are an f4. So remember, that's one stop darker. So we're talking about a 50th of a second instead of a 100th of a second. And one of them has a vibration, oh, sorry, image stabilization, and the other one doesn't. So uh, for me, I've only actually ever seen three in shops. Um, the, the very cheapest one, which is the 70 to 200 f4 USM, that's it. Ultrasonic motor, I mean, it's nice and fast at focusing. But seemingly there are four different types of these lenses, uh, as shown by my Canon Japanese magazine, which I've got here. Now the question is, what is the point, or what, which lens would you buy? Now obviously the cheapest lens is the f4 and the one without any image stabilisation. The cool thing about all of these lenses is that they're very well water, no, not water resistant, but weather resistant. So if it's raining on top of your camera or this lens, you probably will be fine. I don't think you'll have any problems in the rain. I don't think rain will get inside the actual lens and start growing fungus inside. So the question is, f4 or f2.8, image stabilization or not? And it all depends on the type of photography that you're doing. So if you are... Uh, doing sports photography out in the you know any sort of sports where you need a fast shutter speed if you're doing snow sports if you're doing hockey if you're doing uh, any of these things then the image stabilization isn't really going to be beneficial to you because the shutter speed that you're going to be using is going to be faster than what any v image stabilization will help out with image stabilization is really for whenever you're taking photos at a speed which is slower than the length of the lens. So if you've got 200 millimeter lens, you want to be taking photos at a minimum of 200. If you're trying to take it at a hundredth of a second or maybe a 70th of a second, then that's where you'll want to have some vibration reduction or some image stabilization. But if you're doing fast action sports with lots of light, then uh, you don't need the image stabilization one. If you're out on the mountain where it's got like loads of snow, loads of sunshine, F4, absolutely fine. If you are shooting in a slightly maybe more indoors and your the lighting isn't so great, then that's where you kind of want the f2.8. So the f2.8 will help you keep it at a hundredth of a second shutter speed instead of 50th, or to put it another way, you can have it at ISO 1600 instead of with the f4 you'd have it at 3200 ISO. So that's where the image quality will also benefit by having the f2.8. But the big baddie, big baddie, the big daddy of them all is the 70 to 200 IS f 2.8 number two, and that is the really expensive one. That is really the most expensive lens, but it's the one which you could use in every situation. If you don't need it in every situation, if you know you're definitely going to be having fast shutter speeds and all that, then it doesn't really matter. But if you're doing weddings where you most likely will be taking photos at maybe a 70th, 80th, 90th, 100th, 120th, 150th of a second, then you want that image stabilization. You'll also want it to be as bright as possible. So the f2.8, you will want it to be as bright as possible. So you don't have to put the ISO up as high as you would if you're with your f4 or if you're using a kit lens, f5.6. But other than that, I think a lot of Nikon shooters are very jealous that Canon shooters, Canon photographers have got this option. We, uh, the, sorry, we, the Nikon photographers only have one 70 to 200 millimeter, which has VR and is an amazing lens. Optically, very, very good. And I'm sure all of these lenses are optically fantastic because they're all L lenses. L means professional, means very good optics that you've got inside. In terms of what you need, if you're on a budget and you're shooting fast sports in good light, get the cheapest one that you can get and save your money for a good camera. If you always know that you're going to progress and you're going to do weddings or you're going to do lower light or you're doing indoor stuff, get the best one that you can, which is the one with vibration reduction, sorry, image stabilization and 
at f2.8. But it is a whopping difference. You can actually almost buy four f4 lenses compared to the one f2.8 image stabilization lens. And another thing is a lot of people say, you know, why do I see so many sports shooters shooting with Canon? And it's because Canon's got so many good telephoto sport lenses. So Nikon, I think, still has the best wide-angle lenses and what I would consider probably the best flash system compared to Canon. But Canon definitely, in terms of its sports stuff, A, they sponsor a lot of big sports, especially in America, but also their huge lenses that they've got are just amazing. You cannot fault them on that. Um, but yeah, that's just a little tip if you're wondering about what 70 to 200 millimeter lenses that you've got and you're a Canon shooter. Sorry, Nikon fans. I'll do a video later.